Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. In today's episode we are going to be having a look at August's exceptional story, The Tempest. But as always before we start, spoilers ahead, I thoroughly encourage you to support Fail Better and play this for yourself by getting an exceptional friendship. Not only do you get access to this story, you get access to the House of Chimes, a bigger card deck and twice as many actions. But without further ado, let's go into it. A meteorological anomaly. The Neath's few remaining meteorologists have detected a fall in barometric pressure over the Z. Now, a group of intrepid storm chasers are heading to the coast to watch the tempest unfurl. An enterprising carriage driver is offering his services. Oh, we can board the carriage. But a penny. Storms cannot be seen from London. The carriage's suspension sags as the other storm chasers bundle in after you. Once the cab is so full that passengers are having to sit on one another's laps, an urchin darts inside and scuttles under your seat. Judging that it would be more trouble to extricate her than it would be worth, the carriage driver slams the door and sets off the coast. The tempestuous urchin spends the entire journey punching your ankles. What is it with exceptional stories at the moment and having to deal with bloody children? Hmm. As soon as the driver opens the carriage door, the tempestuous urchin darts out from between your legs. It's not safe, child, yells an oil skin clad storm chaser but she gnashes her teeth at him. The air is thick with static. Tiny droplets of, could that really be rain? Spot your face. The storm chasers line up and point their binoculars at a rumbling cloud that obscures the cavern roof. I will say it's not common for you to get weather fronts underground. I am curious as to what is causing this. Let's watch. It is rare that a storm can be seen from the coast. The cloud flickers. Forks of lightning strike the surface of the Z, followed by thunder that you feel deep within your bones. Storm's angry, mutters the oil skin clad storm chaser. A sheet of rain advances on the shore, and the crowd shivers. The carriage driver steps towards his vehicle. Suddenly, lightning strikes the shingle, and the storm chasers scream. As they scurry back to the sanctuary of the carriage, the tempestuous urchin breaks away from the crowd and rushes towards the Z. Someone, grab that child! shouts the oil skin clad storm chaser, but makes no move to do so. The little figure stands illuminated by flashes of lightning, waves boiling over her boots. Oh, damn and blast, we're gonna have to rescue the child, aren't we? She's in terrible danger. There is also the other option of she's not your responsibility, but no, we, we will go and rescue the damn child. Ouch. You sprint through lashing rain towards the tempestuous urchin. She screams when you scoop her up and thrashes in your arms as you drag her away from the shore. The storm chasers are huddled by the carriage, holding out their arms to help you inside. A flash lights up their horrified faces before the bolt rips through you, stopping your heart. You collapse on the shingle, the tempestuous urchin rigid in your arms. I've been struck by lightning. You awaken upon damp shingle, surrounded by concerned storm chasers. The rain has stopped, the cloud has dissipated, and the tempestuous urchin is nowhere to be seen. Very thing you did says the oil-skin-clad storm chaser. You'll get no thanks from the girl, though. 
She ran away before we could stop her. Your muscles shake as the storm chasers help you to your feet. The skin on your back burns. Well, let's return to our lodgings. The child has gone. There is no more to be done here. The mark of a god? As the carriage trundles back to London, the oil-skin clad storm chaser speculates on what happened to the tempestuous urchin. She must have angered Storm, he says. The god in the roof. Raven mad. He's got some connection with the urchins, those kids who live on the rooftops. At your lodgings, you examine your injury. A fern-shaped pattern of raw skin fans out across your back. Somewhere, the tempestuous urchin must be nursing a similar wound. And the story continues at Storm Touched. And there it is, Storm Touched. Your lightning burn is healing, but the fern-shaped mark still itches beneath your clothes. Wherever she is, the tempestuous urchin must be similarly affected. The oil skin clad storm chaser suggested that the child might have angered Storm, a god with some connection to London's urchins. As it happens, an urchin gang has lately been patrolling the rooftops outside your lodgings. You are able to beckon a pair of small ruffians to your window. So we can either ask about Storm, or we can ask after the Tempestuous Urchin. Let's ask about Storm. He has burned you. You show the urchins your fading burn, and explain that you were struck by lightning. The urchin with a colander on his head examines the burn with something approaching envy, then gives you an address near the flit, London's hidden rooftop district. Talk to Slivy, he says. Urchin with a birthmark, he needs to know Storm's touched you. Oh, and he's been tired lately, so don't upset him. Else you'll have to answer to me. He waves his wooden sword menacingly. Let's ask after the tempestuous urchin. The child may need your help. As you describe the girl, the urchins roll their eyes. She is a notorious pest who refuses to join any of the urchin gangs, yet still insists on remaining in London's hidden rooftop district, the Flit, making a nuisance of herself. Slivy, the urchin with the liver-coloured birthmark, is the only one who can stand her. Well, let's go and meet with Slivy. He knows something about the tempestuous urchin. You make your way to the address the urchin gave you and find yourself in a blind alley with a ladder at one end. Above your head, armed children scurry across rope bridges, whooping as they fire projectiles at one another. You climb the ladder to a room with no roof, open to the cavern. Slivy is curled up on the floor, a frayed shawl around his shoulders. I hoped you would c come, he whispers, pushing himself upright. She told me what happened. A spitball hits you in the chest, and the tempestuous urchin steps out of the shadows, brandishing a pea shooter. Oh, you again? She huffs. Though a child, Slivy has the bearing of an old man. He is hunched, and there are dark circles beneath his bloodshot eyes. I c c can explain, he stutters. About Storm. She already knows everything. He nods at the tempestuous urchin, who is manufacturing more pea shooter ammunition. But you should know too, for her sake. Okay, well, let's ask who Storm is. 
The oil-clad Storm Chaser called him the God in the Roof. Storm is a fearsome thing, explains Slivy. A god of rage and regret. Driven so mad with fury that he's almost forgotten he's dead. Still, he upholds a kind of order. The alternative may be worse. For years, Storm has spoken to Slivy. A few others, all children. It's because only the very young are spared full understanding of their mistakes. There is peace in that, and Storm longs to feel it. I'm only supposed to, to, to tell people things Storm want them to know, Livy whispers. But he doesn't want me talking like this. He casts a nervous look at the ceiling. He's been specially cross lately. Remembering he's dead more and more often makes him upset. Interesting. Let's ask why Storm struck us. It happened when you tried to rescue the tempestuous urchin. You got in the way when Storm c kinda says Slivy. It means she's not his yet. Yeah, you stopped me from being a god, says the tempestuous urchin, flicking a damp wad of paper at you. Not exactly, Livy says to her. Storm wants you to help me. I'm getting tired, and he's afraid of what will happen to his mind if he can't talk to me anymore. Find someone else, snaps the urchin. I tried, replies Slivy. Sometimes without Storm knowing. And some of those other children helped a little, but none of them could do it for long. They grew up instead. Oh. So is Slivy somebody who doesn't get old? Interesting. Let's inquire about his health. He does not look well. I have had a storm in my head for a very long time says Slivy. Means I don't grow old, but I get tired in other ways. It'd be easier if I wasn't alone, the tempestuous urchin rolls her eyes theatrically. Slivy explains that there are things he wishes he'd known when Storm first spoke to him. Things about himself he should have confronted. You told me those things are why Storm likes you interjects the tempestuous urchin. And that I have them too, and that's why he likes me. They're also what makes me so t tired, mumbles Slivy. Okay, well, let's address the tempestuous urchin. If it wasn't for her, Storm would have never have struck you. You got in the way, protests the tempestuous urchin. The Storm God wanted me, and you thought you knew best, just like a grown-up. Don't you see, says Slivy, turning to her. You have a chance now. Storm will come for you again. But now our friend can help you prepare. But grown-ups don't know anything, protests the tempestuous urchin. Maybe not, says Slivy. But perhaps this one can remember being young better than I can. What does Slivy mean? Prepare. What does Storm want with a tempestuous urchin? When I ask Storm what he wants with you, all I see are swirling clouds, says Slivy to the tempestuous urchin. He can't keep his thoughts in order. I've t t t tried to help him, but I can't make sense of his mind any better than he can. He thinks you might be able to. What if I don't want to help a lazy old god? She retorts. He'll come for you, whether you want it or not. You must explore your anger before he does, or you'll end up like the others. Or m me, Slivy coughs. He might let you go, 
It's happened before, but I don't know how to make him do that. Okay, so Slivy has explained as well as he can. Well, let's decide whether to help the tempestuous urchin. The burden has fallen to you. She needs to explore her anger before Storm comes for her again. And she can't do it alone, says Slivy. I d d d don't know what will happen if you don't help her. I just know it's got to be you because of what happened on the beach. He scratches his birthmark. The tempestuous urchin scowls at you. So we have two options we can accept. Perhaps you wish to help. Perhaps you do not wish to find out what Storm might do should you refuse. Or we can refuse. You have your own reasons for not wishing to help a child explore her rage. Oh well, I suppose I should help. Slivy's shoulders sag with relief. Listen, he says to the tempestuous urchin. Don't go to Storm yet. You'll be lost. Learn to control your anger, or give into it so you can use it like a f, f fuel. He frowns. You might be able to let go of it altogether. I don't know exactly, but our new friend can help you. Grown ups have their uses. The tempestuous urchin wipes her nose on her sleeve. What did you do with your anger? She asks him. Can't r remember, replies Slivy. It was so long ago. Hmm, so we can let teach her how to let go, how to express it, or how to control it. Interesting. Slivy beckons you aside as the tempestuous urchin stalks off towards the window. There are r reasons she is angry, he whispers. If she understands them, she'll be stronger when Storm comes for her. Her helper. Come on, shouts the tempestuous urchin from on top of the ladder. Grown-ups always take forever to do anything. Well, let's return to the streets. Your task is clear. Slivy wraps his shawl around himself and curls up on the floor, exhausted. The tempestuous urchin kicks your ankles until you climb back through the window. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Okay then, let's have a look. Preparing the tempestuous urchin. Slivy has told the tempestuous urchin that she must explore her anger before she begins working for Storm. However, she's in no hurry to get to work. She sits on the cobbles, scowling at you. Uh, we can ask what angers her. Urchins have so much to be angry about. Shut up, says a tempestuous urchin. I don't want to talk about things that happened before. It's boring. Grown-ups are always trying to make you do boring things. Like the man in the orphanage, in spite, always making me read stupid, boring books. No one likes books. She will not elaborate. Well, when talking to them fails, bribery is bound to work straight away. Buy some toffees. A street vendor is selling them. The tempestuous urchin turns her nose up at your offering. But when you lift a toffee to your own lips, she snatches it and stuffs it in her mouth without removing the wrapper. It's probably not as good as the ones... At my family house, she says before extricating the wet wrapper from her mouth, dropping it on the cobbles and wiping her fingers on your sleeve. At a shuttered palace. Ooh. The shuttered palace is her family home? I don't know, that seems a bit crazy, doesn't it? Well, let's talk to her about Storm. How does she feel about working for him? Storm's not in charge of me scoffs the tempestuous urchin. I don't do anything for anyone. Not even, she casts a nervous look at the cavern ceiling and lowers her voice. A big, angry god. She picks at her frayed sleeve. Still, Storm must be a bit clever. 
he likes the things everyone else hates about me. And maybe I can help Slivy a bit. He's tired all the time and never wants to play. So where do we want to go? We can visit the orphanage in spite. Or we can visit the Shuttered Palace. I think I'm going to go to the orphanage. The Tempestuous Urchin is angry about her experience there. The Tempestuous Urchin trapezes up the orphanage and kicks at the door. It is opened by the harried orphan keeper, who has a paper dart entangled in his hair. He is overcome with relief upon seeing the tempestuous urchin and crouches down to her level. I've been so worried about you, he says. Then why didn't you come find me? She snaps. The harried orphan keeper sighs. From the floor above, a herd of children stampede over aged floorboards. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this as well. We don't mind, my dear, the harried orphan keeper says to the tempestuous urchin. I'd like to speak to your friend for a moment. She rolls her eyes and slumps down on a wooden bench. The harried orphan keeper leads you to his office and closes the door with a rattle. I don't have long, he says. I'm in the midst of teaching a cooking class, and if they're left alone too long, well, he trails off, haunted by a memory. So I'll get right to the point. Child, have you adopted her? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh dear. So we have two options. We have indeed, perhaps he will be relieved, or not exactly. I mean, there's, there's legal paperwork, right? Oh, let's just go with we have indeed. Even though that might be the wrong choice. And the Tempestuous Urchin is going to hear this, and I don't know if she's actually going to like this, but yes, okay, we have indeed. We have a kid now. That's wonderful news, says the harried orphan keeper. I can't tell you how worried I've been. I did what I could when she ran away, but the constables didn't seem too worried about one more orphan, and I couldn't go out looking for their er uh, myself. There are 30 other children here, and I can't leave them alone for a moment. The wave of relief breaks and rolls back. I say, you're looking after her all right, aren't you? Not, he hesitates, sending her to work or anything. She's a good child, really, says the harried orphan keeper. But it takes such a long time for it to show. Not everyone is patient. How are you finding the arrangement, if you don't mind me asking? Okay, so actually you're here to return her. Uh, perhaps you think the orphanage is the best place for her. Perhaps she has become a burden. No. <laughs> yes, I have adopted her and I would like to return her now. <laughs> Things are going as well as could be expected. You are merely visiting. Good, good, says the harried orphan keeper. Do be patient with her, especially about reading and the kick-in. Oh, I find it's best not to get too upset about the insults, especially the accurate ones. If she finds one that works, you'll never hear the end of it. I'm almost afraid to ask, says the harried orphan keeper. How are you finding life with the child? Oh god, so we can say she is a terror, rude, violent, filthy. Or we can say she is spirited. It is bracing to meet one so sure of their own mind. I like the term spirited, so we're going to go for spirit. I agree completely, says the harried orphan keeper, brightening. Of course, I spend my days around 30 such people, and every now and again I yearn for the company of someone a little less sure of their own mind. But truly, I would not have it any other way. He's very bright, you know, continues the harried orphan keeper. I'd have liked to help her more, but my attentions are split thirty ways. There is a clatter from the room above, and a chorus of muffled cheers. It's why I hoped she'd take to reading. So she'd be able to teach herself things I couldn't. But she gets so frustrated with books, he sighs. 
I cannot fathom why. Can you make sense of it? Okay, so we have three options. It doesn't matter. She doesn't need books. There are other ways to learn. Uh, she doesn't like being told what to do. Grown-ups have shown themselves untrustworthy. Or she is afraid of failure. Books are threatening. So, let go of her anger. Control her anger. Express her anger. I think letting go of her anger is a good idea. So I think that is the choice I'm going to try and follow. There's an argument to controlling anger. But I think I like the idea letting go. There are other ways to learn. That's awfully sad, don't you think? It's the harried orphan keeper. I always take such comfort from books, and I've learned things that a person without means might never have otherwise. For me, they are windows into other worlds. He gazes at his tattered bookshelf. But she isn't me, he says, as if to himself. Perhaps if I'd realised that sooner, she wouldn't have run away. The tempestuous urchin has learned a little how to let go of her anger. There is a crash from the floor above, and some muffled whoops. I really must get back upstairs, says the harried orphan keeper, and I'm terribly glad you came. Well, let's leave. There is nothing more to be learned here. The harried orphan keeper opens the rickety office door, and the tempestuous urchin leaps back, doing her best to pretend she wasn't listening. It's good to see you again says the harried orphan keeper to her. You will always be welcome here. She sticks her tongue out at him. Charming. But this seems like a good place for me to end the first episode. In the next episode, we will go to the Shuttered Palace and find out what the secret is there. So I will thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always. I'll see you next time.